Hello, hello. I'm just going to do a fun little tutorial on making a fantasy vase. Now, it's a workflow that I've been still kind of practicing a little bit. Uh, I'm kind of new to sculpting, but in the end, you could take into your uh, texturing program of choice. Have some fun textures like this. This is just a normal map on this. And uh, yeah, so let's just delve right into it. So when you have Blender open, first thing you want to do it's just delete the cube. Now we want to have a single vertice, which if you don't have add-on extras by default, which is a single vertice here, you can have that enabled if you go into preferences and go to add-ons, extra objects, extra objects meshes, and you can take on that and it should be enabled and if you don't want to do it that way you can also just like select all of these hit M to merge at center and we have a single vert so the idea of this is we're gonna create the profile of the vase then we're gonna uh, I was gonna say screw it around so it's gonna rotate the shape and that's gonna be our base mesh so let's just begin quickly and let's just do something like this for now because we need to understand how the uh, rotation is going to go. So we screwed it up into the Z up here, so this is what it looks like in space. I'm going to tab out so we can see what's happening here. I'm going to go to the modifiers, add modifier, and we're going to choose the screw option. It looks like the default one, axis, on the Z or Z is correct. There are a number of options here you can play around with. So look what happens if I do this. That means just the full rotation. So 360 is a full rotation. Screw. It's just if you need to move this upwards or downwards, you can get some really fun shapes this way. Iterations is like how many times it does it. So this is more so with the screw setting. You can see what's happening here. Let's just move that back down and back to one. Tons and tons of things you can play around with. But for now, these settings are fine. Uh, we're going to also add something called a subdivision. So we'll find that right here. And we can just drag this on top here. And so what's going to happen is with the subdivision, let's put a thing here. It's just going to try to smooth the wireframe out just a tiny bit. Okay. So let's continue on. We're manipulating the profile of this. And we can just really have some fun, be kind of like liberal in terms of what we want to do. I kind of want to do it on the side here because it's easier for me to imagine how the mirroring is. This is the, what view is this? The right view, depending on how, which angle you have it at. Okay, so we're just, I'm just going to hit E to extrude. You can kind of see that we can make some really fun, intricate shapes this way. And the closer it is to an angle like this, you can see it's getting more straight. If you want a hard edge, we'll have to add like another edge right here in between these two so you can see the profiles like this we will need another subdivision here so that's how we get so I select these two vertices hit W and subdivide you can bring this down to try and kind of really pinch it in you can also see this is going straight up this way we can select all these and we can scale it on the Y to zero which aligns everything nicely so we can just bring this down slightly, and this is how we can start manipulating things this way. Get out of the x-ray mode, and let's take a look. It's looking really cool, so let's let us continue scaling this or, and extruding it. So let's go back to the right view, and let's just... Really, this is we're all up to the aesthetics of the artist now. We're just kind of like having fun doing it like this. So I would say... Almost, I'm kind of happy with this. This is ha this is good for me. We might try to bring this down and create a little fun base like this. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this. That's looking really good. We're gonna have to convert this into a mesh. Bring this down like this. Bring this like that. Uh, another thing is like if we're trying to create a sculpting that we can take it into uh, like this substance painter to subdivide we kind of need a very basic base mesh i kind of like to keep things low res on my end so if you look at something like like that might be too low res honestly and things are twisting slightly here so let's try and fix that oops there we go 
pointing back this way. You can see it's trying to twist, but that looks good. Okay. And let's add in, I think two would be good. Okay. So I'm just going to hit apply all, or we can hover over these. And we can also just transform this to a mesh. Depending if you don't have this setting, uh, you can convert this into a mesh and you should apply all. But let's see what hotkey was that? Whoops. Nope. Nope. This one? Nope. Is it this one? This one? Uh, okay. It's Alt C, convert to mesh, and it just applies everything if you don't have the add on to enable apply all modifiers. So we tab in. This is what our mesh looks like. It's kind of nice in some areas, a little dirty in a few things, but. Uh, next thing I like to do is to kind of merge the bottom here into uh, a single point. Oh, uh, at center is something we want, so select all the vertices at center. So it just kind of cleans it up a little bit on the bottom there. I'm going to do this just to add a little bit of a hard edge here. And take a look at the top here. Uh, this might cause some troubles. If we try to take it into like a game engine, because all this is going to be back face culling, uh, we could also uh, really clean some of this other stuff here. But that could be something for later on. Um, let's see what the remeshing would look like if we go into remesh. And the reason for voxel not working is because everything's open ended. If we do smooth, it looks like we're going to get things somewhere. Five iterations. Oh yes, you can see it's closed up the front here. Blocks, sharp, sharp's looking a little bit better. Let's see the face count, a thousand face count as opposed to a thousand. Oh, it's still the same here. Hmm. Oh, well, uh, these are just my mindset, like in terms of optimization. Uh, eventually, we'll probably want to retopologize uh, this. Okay, so let's just begin now. Let's say we're happy with this and we're going to start sculpting. Uh, what we're going to do is create a multi-resolution mesh, which is kind of like subdividing, but we're using this for the high um, the high res version of the sculpt. So we're going to subdivide this. You can see it's getting smoother. And we can probably do 3 to 4, and you can see the triangles and face count is up, so this is 265,000. Mm -hmm. Go to sculpting, and we can just start adding detail now. Uh, one thing we can end up doing is we can play around with our mat caps just to see more forms. Because you can see if I add this, we kind of want to see the indentations. So we can enable cavity. You can see here within cavity if it should start picking up more harder edges. I think this one would be kind of cool. All right, and let's see what's happening with our faces. I have a feeling it's inverted. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's inverted. So we'll have to select everything and flip the normals uh, like this. So now everything's correct. Red means it's facing inward. And then we, before we even start, remember to apply transforms. So all transformations. Uh, you can also just do scale and location. And now if we go back to sculpting, there we go. It looks like it's in the correct orientation. Now this is the fun part, this is what I like doing. Here you can practically do anything you want, but I'll show you some cool things I've found in the way. So let's go to the front view here, and let's choose symmetry, and let's see, we want to symmetrize radial, so that means like all the brushes can be mirrored around the z-axis. So if I do this, you can see my brush is mirroring across, which means that we can only do, what's this? A fifth of the work <laughs> and it also leaves room for unexpected cool results so very quickly with the there's different kind of sculpt tools we can use the draw draw sharp scrape tons and tons of fun tools here uh, usually with this kind of stuff i like to use the scrape tool which kind of gives it more of that like weathered look so if i start doing this you can see what's happening here and then let's do it a bit here just kind of gives it i like that old kind of weather to tear our look. So let's do something like that here. And since we're doing it on all the axes, it's going to be a little bit faster. And if you don't like the symmetrized look, that's completely fine. You can just go to one and you can, once you have like a base look here, you can like start adding some unique 
imperfections in certain areas. Uh, if you have a tablet, this will be a bit better too. I'm just currently using a mouse. I, I do have a tablet, but I just want to showcase that you can definitely do this if you just have a mouse and make these really cool little vases or, you know, do art. That's what I love about using 3D here. Okay. So we have some fun imperfections like this. And you can really have at it and really take your time to doing all these kind of vases. But if we're just doing something quick for a demo, this should be good as a base mesh. Or, uh, sorry, first pass of a sculpting detail. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is let's try to draw a sharp. And if we just draw on this, you can see it's kind of creating this indent. However, it still looks a little low res. And now this is an indication to me that I need to bump up my subdivisions. So it's at four. Let's bump it up a little bit by five. And you can see it's, this would be fine for me, this kind of quality. But if you want even more detail, let's just subdivide to six. It's going to start chugging a little bit. And now if I draw, you can see it's really sharp. The cool thing about multi-res is there's an op uh, optimal display. So you see when I rotate, it's rotating at a lower base mesh, which is super nice and handy. So it doesn't lag your blender. Okay, I'm just going to control Z that out. And let us go back to symmetry. And let's try adding this stuff again. So maybe, let's see what 5 looks like. Maybe let's double that to 10. Okay, cool. So now we have all this doubled up. We could just like draw stuff on this, rotate stuff on this, add stuff. So I'm on draw sharp. And as I said before, if I click and drag, you can see it does these cool patterns. Now we can also use a masking tool, which is down here. Uh, it's called the box mask. We kind of like mask off certain sections if you want like patterns to appear in certain areas. So now when I draw, oops, sorry. When I draw here, you can see nothing's happening unless I come down here. So that kind of keeps it really nice and neat. You can kind of like rotate things around. That's kind of like what I like to do like that. But it's a very, I think if I start here, start here and like draw slowly. The mouse, there we go. That kind of looks neat. And you can go in and like add in your own, you know, fun little detail. So let's say if this is carved in like that, we can add, if you hold control, it creates more of a sharp edge coming up, but that might be something you don't like. So we use the draw tool instead. You can see draw tool if you hold control, it's the inverse, so it's digging into it. So we can use that to like quickly create some fun iterations. I'm just gonna maybe create some fun patterns here. So. F is to change the brush size. Shift F is the intensity. So one, you can see like a little dot here, which is kind of nice. I'm just going to keep that. And let's try doing a intricate pattern like that. And then let's go up here and maybe just do like a, sure, let's do that. Maybe across like that. And then let's do a little circle around here. Doesn't have to be that good. I kind of like the to me this is like a little human touch here like this might be a, <laughs> a journey a journey man or just someone really starting out with this kind of vase work and go it also has a very appealing look to me you don't want anything too perfect oh and like a little something here. I like that intricate pattern. So let's try doing that here. Like a little sun like this. Okay, so we have it like that. And we can clear the mask with Control M. And that mask is cleared. And we can do the same approach. So let's do a or are you box mask. We don't want this part to be touched. And mask. This is inverted. Uh, what's happening here? Arena symmetry. Zero, one. Hmm. Something is happening on. 
box mask two poles options navigation hmm. Oh, Alt M. What's Control M? It's clear mask. There we go. Okay, let's try and bo uh, box mask. Oh, box masking this now. Box mask, and let's pop this in here. There we go. And let's just say we don't want anything to touch this. We don't want anything to touch this, and we don't want anything to touch this side. Go back to our draw, and we can just go back to radial, crease this, and we can have fun like that. Put a little dot there. Maybe, oh, that's kind of neat. Let's try that. Maybe a bit smaller. Like that. And then we're going to do this, like that. And then we can hold control to dig in. I don't think this would look good with our base mesh. That's the one thing, you want to be careful not to change your base mesh too much. But if you're just looking after the sculpt, just doing this part, it's completely fine. You can get away with changing, you know, altering the base mesh. All right, so let's do that. I kind of like the hard edge, the way it pops out. Okay, so Alt-M is what we're after. And let's do a final touch, like, like that. And let's go and do a little intricate pattern this way. Let's put a smiley face here. <laughs> and there we go. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. Cool. Okay, so we have this really cool little vase thing here that we can now bring in to other, other applications. But if you're just looking to sculpt them like this, uh, you can stop here. Alright, so now we go back to layout. Here is our fun little guy. Now, we have to, to be able to bake normals, we have to do some UV unwrapping. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a pain, uh, but generally you can do automated stuff if you're just in a pinch, if you're not trying to get this into a video game, it's completely fine to do it that way. Uh, for me, I'm just going to show you some quick way I, I tend to do it. It's like, I just tend to like, since this is sim simplish to me, I might be doing this uh, relatively, excuse me, wrong, but I'll create a scene over here, so mark scene, and mark scene. Uh, the way I like to think about UV mapping is like if you have a serial box and you just cut that in half, what would it look like? And you just want to have like clean geometry this way. So I'm just going to cut this out, so this will be a bottom piece. This will be our top piece up here, so I'm just going to cut this, yes, like that. And then I kind of want to have line going straight down as if I'm slicing it open so maybe from from here all the way down to here oh, down to here and let's mark scene here so let's you want to cut it in half so it doesn't take too much of the UV space and now if I go into the UV editor so let's go to UV editor select all this UV unwrap if this is okay there might be some weird pinching here and it's like some other more complex thing with tanks uh textile density but as a beginner I, I wouldn't worry about those things too much just have fun with these tools here okay so we have this done now we can either export this into substance painter but then that becomes more of a substance painter tutorial uh, i'm just going to show you how to bake the normal map and perhaps you can start using blender to color in your little base mesh okay so let's begin so we have our viewport here of level viewport this low. Uh, what we can end up doing is, if I look at the shader here, create something new. This is the shader here. I'll have to create a new image, texture. This is where the bake's gonna go. So I'll hit new and 2048 by 2048. And let's call this normal map. And we just make sure that this is selected. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the engine, change it to cycles. I kind of like using my GPU, so that's fine like that. And now we're going to head over to bake, bake from multi-res, and we just want to bake the normals. And now we can just hit bake, and let's see what kind of image spits out. And let's see if it's 
bat anything at. All right, so as you can see here, these are our normals based on the information here. Sometimes you may need to tweak some of the margin stuff, but I think this is great for the, our own needs. Okay, so once that's done, we can switch this back to Eevee. Go to our full view here. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this, move this to the side, and then apply, not apply, sorry. I will get rid of the multi-res, so we look back at our base, and then let's plug this guy into our normal map. Now, currently it's an sRGB, which is not what normal map information is. I learned it the hard way, because if we just plug this into normal, you can see it's thinking about something. It's it's not really what we want. It's not as accentuated as this, because we have to save this image. This is currently within Blender, but you can see this uh, asterisk here. So we're just going to save as, and we'll just call this uh, normal map. So we'll just save that as is. And now the color space option is available. So we can either choose non-color, or we can choose, I think was it linear? I think, I think it was definitely non-color. The strength is rather low, so we can bump the strength up. You can see what's happening on this end. It's also affecting this because we're sharing the sh uh, same material. So if I just click this out, this is the uh, uh, sculpt. And you can kind of see it's not too bad, actually, the way the information is. It would be a little bit better if we had geometry that jutted out, but you can see that's what happens when the geometry doesn't stick out as much. But generally, I'm kind of pleased with this. And we check our normal maps. 1, 5, 10, 5. And now we can just have fun. We can bump this up all the way to metallic, lower the specular, we can like lower the roughness, bring it up. We can throw in a HDRI map. So let's just throw that in just to see how it react to the world. That looks really, I'm actually really content with that. You can see. Ooh, let's move this around just to see all the fanciness. Uh, we can start plugging, so this is a roughness map. Uh, we can plug in textures to try and simulate the wear and tear. So let's try doing that. We can plug in a noise texture. And within this noise texture, let's plug in a color ramp. Uh, but if you can see, this is what the noise is going to look like. I kind of want it to be all even out. So I'm just going to do object. So it's evenly seamless like this. Oh, no stretching. That's what I mean. And let's say that's about there. Darken it like this. Okay. So now if we put this into roughness, kind of see. A little bit of rare and tear. Kind of cool looking. And this is where you can add in your own images, your own roughness maps. Uh, we could copy, duplicate this. And since this is a new one, let's just call this gold. Oh, uh, let's make a new one. And oh, nope, I am doing too many things. Add a new slot, add in this base metal. Call this one gold. It's a different from this. It's a base metal. And then we can assign this gold texture to certain parts. So let's say if we want this top, excuse me, this top to be gold. We can assign that and let's just change the color so you can see. Let's do that for the bottom over here. Excuse me. That, maybe these areas are here like that. We can also convert the normal map and try and extract some information from that and use that as a mask. That'd be kind of cool. But I just want to show you what you can do with just assigning stuff like this. So let's try doing it that way. Let's see what this normal map has. Oops, my bad. Let's do a new material. And let's just... No, let's not do a new material. Let's duplicate this so I can show you the differences of what I'm doing with this intact. So let's just duplicate this. Move this to the side. Delete. And let's create this example. And everything's assigned to this. So if I go to the normal map, kind of see what's happening here. Let's just duplicate this, change this to sRGB. 
see what is happening here. This change reverted back, you can see that it also kind of messy and ugly this way. But I'm just showing you what it looks like over here. Okay, so let's just change this back to non-color. And I think we can just use a separate RGB. And let's plug this in here and let's take a look. So this is our kind of like color information. And what we can end up doing with this kind of information is converting this into a mask. So like with this, I've, I'm using the R, R or red, and I'm trying to extract lighting information, but the lighting information looks like a, a mask that I can manipulate with. So using this, I can probably slot this into the gold to say like, oh, only these parts, I want the gold. So the white parts are where the gold's gonna appear. So that's cool. So color RG, uh, separate color ramp. And so let's go back to this and let's try that out. Uh, we can also, we don't need these two materials anymore unless you want to keep that. But we can just use this and we can duplicate this. And let's change this to gold. Whoop like here and let's mix these two together so mix shader <laughs> excuse me uh, plug these two in plug this into here so it's kind of like mixing the two base colors together it's gonna take some time but now you can see what's happening so if we plug this now to the factor whoops excuse me factor I can think for a bit Inverted. Very, very faint, actually. It looks like it's just, it's almost like the cavities of that. So we could flip these around, see what that looks like. Kind of neat. Uh, we can also like change the material of this. It's like dusted almost. Kind of like that the other way actually. Well, this is just an experimental thing. Um, yeah, uh, we I know we can also manipulate the way this information is fed to with a mix RGB. Um, I, and we can throw in a noise texture. And so what's happening is it's adding a little bit of noise into the mask. You'll, you'll see it pop up here. I just want to like distort it slightly so you can see what happens when I go back and slot out a bit. That's looking a bit better. Okay. Add in kind of want maybe a different. Well, like that's pretty much how you get from here to here. This is definitely a lower resolution mesh because if we take a look at this, this is simplified right now, but let's say if I go to the sixth, five, six, and let's just apply all. Let's take a look at this. You can see how completely dense this thing is. I'm at almost four million polygons as opposed to this but generally speaking at a glance from far away especially in games like this other than like the geo loss because that's not the base mesh of it I think they're kind of like very similar there's some nice lights here but again we didn't have the geo uh, enough geo to accentuate those things all right thank you